It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project requirement, developers in an organization are prototyping a few applications on Google Cloud Platform and are starting to store sensitive information on Google Cloud. The developers are using their personal consumer Gmail accounts to set up and manage their projects within Google Cloud. A security engineer identifies this practice as a concern to the organization management because of the lack of centralized project management and access to the data being stored in these accounts. Which solution should be used to resolve this concern? So clearly there's a problem here that people are using their personal accounts. So a personal account would be where you get it at gmail.com, right? Instead of something at yourcompany.com. And not only are they accessing the application using that, they are also storing sensitive information. So there is a problem with potential data breaches, you know, and maybe even those accounts getting compromised. So the security engineer has raised a concern, which is very valid, that we need to be able to centrally manage these accounts. So in analyzing the requirements, one, Developers are prototyping a few applications on Google Cloud. These are being prototyped. They are not production ready yet. So it's still in early stages. We do want the centralized management, but maybe this is not a full-fledged solution that we're going to adopt across the organization yet. Developers are using their personal consumer Gmail accounts. What happens if their account is compromised? What happens if their password is stolen by somebody else? The organization does not know that. They have no way of knowing that. They can't disable that account. So this is a attack vector. There's a lack of centralized project management and access to data. What happens if the employee leaves? Somebody will have to then go and manually update all the permissions given to that Gmail account and figure out what all they have access to and then delete those um, access. So this could be a problem. It could become a management nightmare or an administrative nightmare. So the solution that we want should be centrally management. So it should be centrally managed. We should have a way to control and audit the data that is accessed by the account. And it should ideally follow the employee's term with the company itself. If the employee leaves, that access should automatically go away. With these requirements, let's now look at the options. Option A suggests that we enforce a setup of security keys as a two-step verification method for those Gmail accounts. So somehow mandate that the user use some kind of multi-factor authentication. Maybe there's a phone number or maybe they get a uh, OTP um, or they have um, an application that authenticates using a ID that is generated every once in a while. But how will admins enforce this? How do you know for sure that the users have actually done this multi-factor authentication? So there's no way to enforce that on any user. Even if they do, they still have the ability to download all the data offline, which is a risk. Not only that, maybe a disgruntled or a vengeful employee might willingly give their credentials to somebody else. So there could be a malicious attack on the data and the organization via this person's personal account. Therefore, even ensuring that they use some kind of security keys and multi-factor authentication does not control the data access or reduce the attack possibilities when using their own personal accounts. So we will eliminate option A for all those reasons. Option C suggests 
that we require the developers to log, store their Gmail passwords with the security team. So we want all the developers who are working on these projects to give up their personal passwords and uh, account credentials to the organization. If at any point in time, if your organization asks you to give them your private credentials, just run. Well, not literally, don't bolt out of the meeting room and through the hallway and out of the gate and that will look ex extremely suspicious. But this should not happen. The organization should not demand it. And if the organization demands it, it should be a firm no from your side. Now, of course, you shouldn't be using your personal Gmail accounts or other accounts as a part of the uh, organization work, but you sh they also shouldn't be demanding access to those credentials. Right? So this is a complete no uh, from your side. And like I said, the organization should not be demanding something like this. So option C is completely out. Option D suggests that you enable logging on all GCP projects to track developer activities. Now this is fairly good. To be able to audit and have a history and a trace of what is happening across these projects is a good thing to have. However, the logging and audit is an after the fact event. If there has been an attack and if people have exfiltrated data belonging to the organization and taken it somewhere, the audit will reveal that they have done it. But there's no way to control that now. It's too late to do that. So just having logging and audit is not a preventive mechanism. It is definitely useful later on when you investigate what has happened in the system, but it does not control access before the act. Therefore, option D is not useful for us either. Option B suggests that you set up a Google Cloud identity and require developers to use those accounts for GCP work. So in all the other options, you're still left with these users using their personal or the consumer Gmail accounts, and you're trying to work around that. But we saw that all of them have some problem. When you're setting up Google Cloud identity, you can allocate email addresses for individual users at your company's domain address. Using Cloud identity, they don't get all the other G Suite services. So since the organization is just prototyping a few things on Google Cloud. Maybe they haven't fully adopted Google Cloud yet. Maybe they don't even have G Suite. This is a good way to get them started. They're not tied into having email accounts with access to all the other um, utilities. They can just use the email address that comes as a part of cloud identity, which becomes the identity into Google Cloud. So cloud identity provides an organization managed account. It is no more managed by the user itself, but by the organization. The access could follow the employee status in the company. So when a person leaves the company, the administrator could disable or delete that account at one central place and will automatically remove access for all the projects and data that they had access to until now. Not only that, the organization admin can set access policies. They can set a virtual perimeter to the kind of data that they can access and that can take out. So you can prevent data exfiltration by assigning permissions to these accounts that you centrally manage, but you can't do that necessarily with some of the consumer accounts. Therefore, given all these reasons, among the ones that we have, option B to use Google Cloud Identity and requiring the users to use that email account will be the right approach in this particular project requirement. All right, now it's time for you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead, do that right now.
because there's loads of great content coming up for learning Google Cloud and preparing for the certifications. Mm -hmm.